Technical issues to start off again. So, hello, hi, my name is Dr. Omar Yasser. I'm the product specialist here at Atomica. And uh, this session is intended to walk you through our newly released modules, the planner and the guide designer to be able to plan and design surgical guides from start to finish, walking you step by step through our soft Atomica software suite. So if you downloaded our software, this uh, session is for you. And still, if you did not download our software, this will be a head start for you to be able to utilize and use our software to plan and design surgical guides. So what do you see here in, my, in the screen is the uh, user interface of the Atomica Implant Planner software. So uh, to be able to have access to the software, all you need to do is to sign up using your personal or any other email, or if you have a Gmail, you can connect with Google and have access to our software immediately. So let me start off by signing in right here. So today's case will be so simple. Mm -hmm. So once I log in right here, There you go. So let's take a new case. Our software, as you may know, supports single DICOM files and multiple DICOM files. And what we have here is an example of a di multiple DICOM file scan. So it renders all the files and bring it together. And this is the rendering of the x-ray. On the right hand side, as you can see, is the patient information and along with some scan information. You, need, you can also, on the left-hand side, uh, you can uh, edit the patient information as well. All you need to do with, from the very beginning is to create a file. Uh, it's also called a project, so let's call that a demo case. It's saved under our format, which is called Atom, uniquely made for us. So once we're done, you tap on adjust.com to save the file and move forward to the next step to start adjusting the DICOMs. So for example, uh, you adjust the DICOM in case the uh, orientation of the scan was not uh, in the uh, correct position or uh, not uh, if the patient was uh, actually uh, tilted a little bit or not in the proper position. As you can see here, I'm utilizing that aspect from here to start and centralize that scan. So I'm using the scrawler right here. Mm -hmm. A bit to the right. So we're, we're, we're going to work on a simple case. I'm going to crop out any unwanted scans to refine the scan a little bit more like that. Mm -hmm. OK. So once we're done with that, about we go ahead and start planning. So let's see what we have here uh, on that case. So it looks like we have a missing uh, central left central incisor, which is tooth number nine. As you can see, once I selected the concerned tooth, the maxillary curve turns on as I'm working on the maxillary arch. So the good feature that we have here that it generates the panoramic curve automatically, and you can do your own adjustments as well. So if I want to do my own adjustments, I can go for a better slice, for example, and I can just move all the points all together like that and do my own adjustments I guess it's already in the in a good place so let's go ahead and move forward to the next step so at this step I'll start importing the model to superimpose it over this can so what we have here is a maxillary model right here and uh, on the side of our software also supports STL OBG and POI all the 3d formats let's go ahead and open that file for us Load the model. As you can see, it uses the power of AI to automatically match the model to the scan. We'll check that together using the t 2D views right here. As you can see, I think it looks so good. I'd like to use another feature that we also offer right here that's called optimized fitting that helps and optimizing the placement of the model in a better place. 
So there's also the conventional way to match the model to the scan right here using corresponding points, for example. So if you'd like to match the manable way, you can do that. I'm not going to go ahead because I think I'm satisfied with that. We can start also by importing the antagonist. So we have to select it to be antagonist and start matching it to be relatively matched to the upper model in case you want to check the occlusion. As you can see here, let me hide the 3D model right here. That's what we have. Perfect. So let's go ahead and move forward to the next step. Before we start adding uh, our implant, how about we start placing the virtual crown to predict how the emergence would look like. Let me hide the mandibular as well. Okay, so this is the crown that I want to place. So our software also have this feature that, uh, that places automatically the uh, virtual tooth for you. But of course you need to check to make sure it's placed in the correct position. Let us start placing that in a better position. Mm -hmm. So I think that case already has spaces, so I don't think we have to, we don't have to make it pretty. We don't have to make contact with the neighboring t teeth. Mm -hmm. Let me adjust that a little bit like that. Mm -hmm. Give it a little bit of width, mimicking the adjacent tooth. I think it needs to be brought a little bit lingually, palatally, I mean. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bring it a little bit like that. I think I'm satisfied with that. So let's go ahead and add our implants. So the very good thing here that we have all the vendors and implants companies, uh, the well-known implant companies are all provided here for you to be able to use your own system. So let me go ahead and use Stroman Bone Level Tapered. So for a central incisor, let's start with 4.1 over 10. And I'd like to place it first using the buccal view, I mean the buccal lingual view right here. So to bring the window a little bit bigger, to zoom in a little bit bigger, I tapped on space. There's also different views on the right corner right here. If you want to make it full screen, for example, like that. Okay, let me check another view. And I love that view because I can put my implant in a centric position. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Let me start positioning the implant in a, in a better mesodistal position. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit wide. But let me start to reposition that. Maybe if we brought a little bit to the mesial, we'll have a better buccal lingual bone. Mm -hmm. I guess for that case, we can go for a little smaller diameter. So we can go ahead and replace that with 3.3 .3 rather than 4.1. So I guess that's better, like that. Mm -hmm. Let's move it bodily. We can also nudge using the keyboard.
let's check the emergence through. I think it needs to be tilted a little bit to the mesial. So let me start and do that right here. We even have a better bone here, so I guess this is a perfect position. I guess we can go for longer, so why not go for longer? Yes. I utilize that green square right here. I can go for sh with shorter, I can go with longer. So let's go with 12. Mm -hmm. We have space and we can do that. Mm -hmm. Great. Let's go ahead and add the sleeving to it. Before adding the sleeving to it, let's add an abutment. So we added an abutment right here. And we're gonna start by selecting the sleeve. So the very first option that pops up uh, at the top is the uh, sleeving, which is compatible to the system that you've selected. So I selected Stroman, so Stroman GS sleeving is the one to go for. Let me hide that and start checking this sleeve position. Let me hide the crown as well. So it's so deep, so better offset right here to be, to be cleared out a bone. And at this case, the doctor needs to make a tissue flap as we're a bit into the tissue. So we're done with the planning, so it's simple as that. So last but not least, we can generate a report that briefly shows, a shows the plan in the case that we just planned together. It shows all the planned products and all the dimensions of the implant used and its sleeve uh, used for that case. And last but not least is the drilling protocol. And it also shows whether it supports IPC or not the IPC, which stands for Input Placement Control. You can export that into a PDF file, and you can send it out to a colleague or to a lab if you want to. And once we're done, let's go ahead and start designing the surgical guide. So to launch the guide design software, you can use that shortcut from here. It will launch it right away. Let's save that. So here's the case that we just planned together. Mm -hmm. So let me hide the mandibular as we don't need it. And it's very simple to design a surgical guide using our software. Simply by tapping on the model, click on generate guide, these are the parameters that you might need to uh, change or you might not because it's in a default set, uh, it's uh, preset it into default settings. So you can also change the guide type, whether it's mucosa or teeth bone, but we, right now, uh, teeth or bone, so now we're teeth supported. And the undercut direction can also manu be manually adjusted using uh, from which uh, you're looking at the model or the perspective from which the, uh, you're, uh, you're directly looking at the model, or it can automatically block out the undercut using the power of AI, of course. So once I uh, tap on generate guide, you can see there's brush in hand, so I can start highlighting where I want my guide to be seated. I'll start out by highlighting the, the two like that. This amount of tooth are enough, I guess. Let me delete that because I don't need that. Mm -hmm. Just start refining that a little bit. Mm -hmm. We'll start refining that here by tapping on control. It will switch to removing instead of adding. Mm -hmm. You can do that.
So there you go. So let us click on generate. So when it, once I click on generate, it will generate two models, the guide and a model with a blocked out undercut. There you go, simple as that. As you can see, the undercuts are already blocked out automatically right here. So simple, so easy. So to export that into an STL file or any other 3D format, all you need to do is to right click on that and export. You can see that you can export that into STL, OBG, or PLY. Once you're done, you can save that and you can print it right away. There's another feature that we uh, that might actually help other doctors. Actually, uh, they they spoke about it. So let me show you that what that feature is. This feature is tooth removal, right here. So you can automatically you can automatically detect which tooth you want to remove right here, as you can see the highlights. Or you can use it the manual insertion by going around the tooth like that to start removing. But of course, who likes manual? <laughs> we can go for an automatic tooth removal by selecting, for example, that tooth to be removed and click on apply. And you see the tooth is totally removed. And of course, there's a bunch of other features. And there's on the left hand side, you can see the features uh, to edit the mesh. Uh, you can see right here, if you're an expert, to start editing your mesh. And uh, this is pretty much it. This how it was uh, it is to be able to utilize our software and how it's easy to design our surgical guide. And for any uh, kind of uh, questions or uh, technical assistance, you can just uh, come forward and email us through support at atomic.ai, and we'll have your questions or technical issues answered and solved. Well, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.